Doctors and nurses everywhere freaked out on March 4th when this came out. This is from the National Vital Statistics System, issued by Stephen Schwartz, the director. It started instructing them for the first time in 50 years on how to fill out a death certificate. They had questions, nonetheless. So they started asking those questions. On the 24th, Schwartz came out with, ah, there we go, alert number two. Remember the date, March 24th. This is important. You're about to see it in action, folks. Okay, there's something everybody who's watching this video needs to understand. Our world has been shut down and the people in it have been manipulated by these numbers right here that are continually being flashed on our screens in back-to-back 24-7 news cycles. These numbers come from the Johns Hopkins University Fear Porn Death Map. For years, it's been reported that universities like Johns Hopkins have been heavily influenced by so-called research dollars from biotech and pharmaceutical companies. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that the higher these numbers appear on your screen and in the minds of the media-influenced masses, the more fear that can be stoked in the hearts of the gullible and the more likely it'll be that these irrationally fearful people will make irrational decisions and do crazy things like beg governments to throw taxpayer money into the pockets of their big pharma savior in order to produce a vaccine. A vaccine that they'll be all too eager to have injected into their veins and into the veins of their children. It's in the best interest of the powers that shouldn't be who own and operate every media outlet, the military industrial complex, and the politicians to present a number to the public that's as large and as alarming as possible. Remember, these numbers right here are what gives them justification to shut down the entire world. But the question is, how did they get these numbers? Where do they come from? That's where this document comes in. And by the way, the links to all these documents that I'm going to show you will be provided in the description and in the pinned comment under this video so you can verify this stuff for yourselves. This is from the National Vital Statistics System Alert dated March 24th, 2020. They introduced the new ICD or International Classification of Disease Code U07.1 and informed the health industry that the World Health Organization introduced U07.2. Now, U07.1 is where viruses are identified and are assigned to a disease diagnosis of CV19 confirmed by laboratory testing. And we'll get to that in a second. And U07.2 is where viruses not identified are assigned to a clinical or epidemiological diagnosis of CV19 where laboratory confirmation is inconclusive or not available. Now, while this form deceptively says because laboratory test results are not typically reported on death certificates in the U.S., NCHS is not planning to implement U07.2 for mortality statistics. However, the last paragraph states clearly that they are planning to implement U07.2. It says CV19 should be reported on the death certificate for all decedents where the disease caused or is assumed to have caused or contributed to death. Yeah, you read that right. According to the World Health Organization and NCHS, it's perfectly fine for someone to assume CV-19 caused the death and to just continue hyperinflating those Johns Hopkins fear porn numbers that just keep popping up on screens in every living room in America and around the world. Who cares if they're dishonest numbers, right? Still don't believe this official NCHS website? Well, then how about the World Health Organization website? An emergency ICD-10 code of U07.1 CV19 virus identified is assigned to a disease diagnosis of CV19 confirmed by laboratory testing. And there's another avenue of massively inflated death count numbers. U07.1 allows for confirmed laboratory test results to tack on more death count numbers. So what's wrong with that? Because we all know and mainstream media knows and the health industry knows that the laboratory tests are about as trustworthy as hiring Charles Manson and Jeffrey Dahmer to babysit your kids while you're away for the weekend. 
We're talking about an 80% false positive rate that you can throw onto the Johns Hopkins fear porn number that enables them to perpetuate their tyranny across the land. They say, quote, an emergency ICD-10 code of U07.2CV19 virus not identified is assigned to a clinical or epidemiological diagnosis of CV19 where laboratory confirmation is inconclusive or not available. In other words, was your test inconclusive, not available? No problem. Throw that death number onto the Johns Hopkins site anyway so we can really scare the crap out of people and voice more economic terrorism on them while small businesses go bankrupt, the middle class disappears, the currency is hyperinflated, and the bankers and corporate oligarchs get away with buying up what remains of the assets in America. Mainstream media throughout the years has objectively proven by their actions that they are the public relations arm of the military industrial complex that Eisenhower tried to warn us about. And by their own admission, these numbers are 100% fictitious. So with that as the statistical factual backdrop, check this out. Okay, we got two issues going on here, so I'm going to try and hit them both real quick in the interest of time. Number one, when this started, the World Health Organization released two codes for deaths of COVID-19, U07.1 and 7.2. 7.1 is for a lab-confirmed diagnosis. 7.2 is for presumed or clinical diagnosis. It says it right here. Come down here, April 17th, right? You guys remember that? It was only a few days ago. Anybody remember the death toll? Like what, 30, 40,000? Not according to the CDC. It was 13,130, a third of what you were told on the news. Odd, but here's the kicker. Even this number's padded. You see that 7.1? Uh-oh, they got a little number one after it. That means they've done something. Down here, deaths with confirmed or presumed COVID-19 coded to ICD-10 code U07.1. Why not use 7.2? Yeah, real. Why not use 7.2? I'll tell you why in a second. Doctors and nurses everywhere freaked out on March 4th when this came out. This is from the National Vital Statistics System issued by Stephen Schwartz, the director. It started instructing them for the first time in 50 years on how to fill out a death certificate. They had questions nonetheless. So they started asking those questions. On the 24th, Schwartz came out with, uh, there we go, alert number two. Remember the date, March 24th. This is important. You're about to see it in action, folks. So down here, he tells them explicitly in bold print or is presumed to have caused or contributed to the death that it should be put on the death certificate. Now, if you know legalese, that's what they just did to you. There's no punctuation there. So all of that is one thing. So what they're telling you is if COVID-19 is assumed to have contributed to the death, you are to mark it as a COVID-19 death on the death certificate. So out of all these pandemics that actually happened where we have real data, you get down to the last flu season, 2017, 2018. Did you guys even know that 80,000 people died that flu season? Did you know that almost a million Americans were hospitalized? Yeah, most people don't. Here's the sad part. We're never gonna know the real COVID-19 numbers because they're combining them all. So we will never have accurate data now, you guys are all down here for this isolation thing, right? I'm going to show you this real quick. July 2020. You see it right there, highlighted. July 2020, volume 26, number 7. This is a leaked CDC document we're giving you today from Debunk This Fauci. Find this hashtag, find our videos, find all the real data, folks. This is that says, how we find you then, Migo? Then? Yep, Thank you can you. Google search that. This says right here in all this cool highlighted stuff, I'll give you the gist, that home isolation might not be a good control strategy. Why? Because it leads to increased familia cluster infections. In other words, it's making it worse, folks. Thank you. 100% proof that they're... Guys, here's what's sad and infuriating about all this. Simple individuals who care about their countries, people who operate on shoestring budgets with their laptops on their kitchen tables are giving people the facts about what's really going on, while billion-dollar multimedia corporations and their teleprompter readers who could be giving you the truth don't.
Why? Because they're the true enemies of the people. All the links that prove everything that was just said in this video are in the description and in the pinned comment. Do your own research. Share this video. Our communities are dying because of yet another lie foisted on the world by the international bankers, their puppet politicians, and the talking head teleprompter readers of mainstream media. It's time to wake up and take our rights back. For the first time in my life, I'm going to the store and seeing empty shelves. It started with toilet paper, then disinfectants. Now I'm seeing empty egg shelves, and it's difficult to go on a day when they have chicken, beef, or even rice in stock. And if people were fighting over butt wipes, imagine what's gonna happen when people start starving. Let's face it, panic is the natural reaction for people who are unprepared. If you are prepared, there's no need to panic. Panic breeds chaos, especially where groups are concerned. And if it's one thing we've learned, you never want to underestimate the power of stupid people in large crowds. Chance favors the prepared mind. So guys, if you don't have enough nutritious, storable food and you need to be more prepared in case things get worse, go to preparewithhighimpactflicks.com and grab your four-week emergency food supply. Because of the massive demand, they're shipping on a first-come, first-served basis. The orders can be delayed 8 to 12 weeks, but believe me guys, it's worth the wait. This food is nutritious, delicious, it's 2,000 calories per day for 30 days, there are 12 food varieties with up to a 25-year shelf life, and you'll save 100 bucks by ordering today at preparewithhighimpactflicks.com. And because of the high demand, there's a limit of 3 per household. Your link is in the description and in the pinned comment. Remember, it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it.